I'm Dr. Harry and welcome back to the lab for another edition of Dr. Harry's Scary Horror Review. Today we're not going to review a direct movie. Instead we're starting a new series. We're going to go back and review individual years in horror. We're going to go back as far as at least the 80s, probably the 70s, and who knows, maybe the 60s or 50s. But we're still in the new year of 2013. Right now, I'm going back and re-reviewing some of the movies from 2012. So i got my 2012 review coming within the next couple of days. However, today I wanted to start with 2009. The reason being, the last few years we've had some good horror movies come out. But 2009, we had a buttload of new good horror movies coming out. So we're going to talk about 2009, and let's have a little review there. In 2009, there were a lot of horror movies that came out. Some of them were good, some of them were popular, some of them were both, some of them were bad. We had George Romero's most recent in his zombie apocalypse franchise, Survival of the Dead. We had the Friday the 13th remake that wasn't, didn't really seem necessary and might as well have been another sequel. We had Sorority Row, The Uninvited, The Unborn. Uh, I believe that year they still had their annual Saw movie. I think it was Saw 6 at that time. Uh, there was also The Final Destination, which it wasn't. There was still a fifth one after that. Alright, so let's cut the shit and get down to the countdown for the best 13 movies of 2009. I'm really happy to do so because most years I have to give you a top five, maybe a top three. There's usually not a lot of great horror movies that come out in one particular year. 2009 was a major exception. I'd be lucky if I could give you a top ten most years. Top 13 for 2009 is not, not a bad deal. Pretty good year in horror, so let's get on with it. Number 13, the remake of the 1987 classic Night of the Demons. Is it scary? Ah, it depends on who you are. I guess the uh, the makeup effects are really good. I think there's a lot of tension and, and uh, it was a pretty good adventure. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, if you ever wondered whatever happened to the kid from Terminator 2, he's in it. Shannon Elizabeth, who disappeared several years ago, she's in it. Hadn't seen him in anything since, but they're both in it. Number 12, My Bloody Valentine. It was one of the first horror movies to come out implementing the new 3D techniques in, in film. Uh, they used it to some comedic effect, but the, the, the film quality was great. Some of the effects hold up. Some of it looks good. Um, it features my favorite actor, Tom Atkins, from The Fog, Night of the Creeps, Halloween 3. Uh, it, it's probably one of the only movies by Todd Farmer and Patrick Lussier that I can stand. It's got a little bit too much comedy, uh, especially when compared to the serious tone of the original from 1981, but hey, I like it. My, my Bloody Valentine works, especially for number 12 on the list. Number 11, Zombieland. Okay, here you got a lot more comedy going on. Granted, they capitalized on the popularity of the zombie genre. It's seen a huge resurgence in recent years. And it's funny and good and entertaining. Good movie, so it makes the list. Number 10, some of you are going to disagree with me on this. Don't hate me too much, but I'm putting it on here anyway. Number 10 is Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie. Okay, granted, there's not a lot of suspense. There's not a lot of scares. You basically see the stuff coming. But hey, let's face it, uh, I'm afraid that the Halloween movies might have kind of lost their... Uh, lost track after Halloween Resurrection. Rob Zombie reunited, uh, reinvigorated the uh, franchise with his first remake in 2007. And the sequel, hey, the Weinstein brothers told him he could basically do whatever he wanted to, although it turns out they had some stipulations on that. But still, he gave us something we hadn't seen before. I can't fault him for that. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie, and I thought it was a good con continuation of his 2007 remake. Number nine. Number nine went straight to DVD, and usually horror movies going straight to video aren't very good, but occasionally you'll find a really good treasure once in a while. So, 
for number nine, we've got The Hills Run Red. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Pretty good horror movie. Really good slasher flick. Number eight, we've got The Collector. The Collector was originally intended to be a prequel to the Saw movies. Somewhere along the line, they decided to scrap that and make it its own thing, and I think that was a wise choice, and they made a really, really good movie, and there's been a sequel since, and I, I can see where they continue on with their own franchise now that the Saw movies are done. Number seven, Grace, the baby from hell. Decent, check it out. Number six, Laid to Rest. Has a similar tone to the collector, especially in the brutality of the killer. Uh, another good slasher flick. They're getting rare and hard to find, but laid to rest is a pretty good deal. Number five, The Haunting in Connecticut. Let's face it, a lot of the haunted house movies anymore aren't very good. They usually, because of technology, want to show you too much and overdo it and make it where it isn't scary anymore. The Haunting in Connecticut came kind of close on some points. But they ended up pulling it off pretty well. I think The Haunting in Connecticut works pretty well for a modern haunted house movie. Number four, House of the Devil. This is from director Ty West. You may not know that name yet, but you will. I predict big things for Ty West. He's also made the more recent movie, The Innkeepers. Another great horror movie. Uh, House of the Devil pays a huge homage to 1970s movies, especially focused on evil and the devil cults type thing, devil worship. Number three, Drag Me to Hell. Okay, many of you like Sam Raimi, especially like the Evil Dead movies. I can't say for sure that if you're a big Evil Dead fan that you're going to just love Drag Me to Hell. It doesn't have quite the same gore, or it's not quite as over the top as the Evil Dead films, but uh, it's still got Raimi's own little touch, his own sense of humor. Um, I really enjoyed it. One of the best movies of 2009. It had its creepy moments, but it had comedy, of course. It is Sam Raimi. But uh, if you haven't seen Drag Me to Hell, check that one out. Number two, Paranormal Activity. Okay, I know some. I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you want to knock it, but hey, look, it's, same thing applied with Haunting in Connecticut. Haunted house movies usually don't work. Paranormal Activity managed to keep a lot of the scares subtle. You saw very, very little, but what you did really delivered. Hey, I liked it. It was Blair Witch for a decade later. I enjoyed it. Um... A lot of the found footage movies seem really tired and overexposed, but uh, Paranormal Activity pulls it off really well, and there's a reason why there's three sequels since then, and I don't see any sign of it stopping anytime soon. Paranormal Activity works. The number one movie of 2009. I can't really say it's scary, but it's a lot of fun. And it's one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. I watch it multiple times a year, especially around Halloween. If you haven't seen Trick or Treat, you need to watch that shit tonight. Trick or Treat is hands down the best Halloween movie ever made. And I mean no disrespect to a John Carpenter or the Michael Myers series. Trick or Treat is incredible. Michael Doherty released a masterpiece. I knew it was a masterpiece the moment I first saw it in 2009. If you haven't seen it, it's an ass load of fun. You need to check it out. It's got almost everything in it. It's, it's an anthology of five or six stories that all intertwine in a really neat way. and really pulled off really well. It's got a great cast, and it's a ton of fun. Check out Trick or Treat. That is the movie of 2009 for horror. And this is the list. If you haven't seen anything on in the, out of these 13, then I recommend them. Check them out. They wouldn't have made my list if I didn't think you'd like them. I'm here to always examine, diagnose, and prescribe the best horror for you. And until next time, I'll see you back here in the lab. Dr. Harry, the doctor's out. Dr. Harry's Scary Horror Review.